Hi, my name is Kenny Walker. I come from the Southern Gould Mayaga tribe of Mid North Coast of New South Wales, and I'm also a proud member of the Salvation Army Corps in Nambucca, in Nambucca River, and I'd like to welcome you all here today. The Salvation Army acknowledges the traditional owners and the land and waters throughout Australia. We pay our respects to elders and acknowledge the continuous relationship to, to this land and ongoing living culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across Australia. Through a respectful relationship we will work for the mutual flourishing of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australia and non-Indigenous Australia. We commit ourselves to, in prayer and practice to this land of Australia and this people, seeking reconciliation, unity and equality. Yadi Yang, goodbye. <laughs>
you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, you lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Come. 
Hi there friends, it's really good to greet you again at this Eyes High event. How important it is that we keep the focus. And today I want to keep the focus right on scripture. From the words of Jesus that came originally from Isaiah in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Great verses, aren't they? This is Jesus' mission statement. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Friends, today, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. I hope that we understand that. We've been called by him for a purpose and it is great purpose. It's a wonderful purpose that we would go into this world proclaiming freedom for all, to look after people, to see them saved, to see them disciple. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you, is on me. Now, I do love the words in Isaiah 61, 3, and he goes on to say, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Now, have you got that, friends? You are an oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. That's what we've been called to be, oaks of righteousness. Now, you can see some of those trees be behind me. The roots are deep. They are standing tall. They are standing together. And apparently the oaks that were being talked about here were planted together planted next to each other, many of them reaching toward the light. And I want to suggest today that in these days, that's who we are to be, our roots down deep into Christ, standing tall in days that are not simple, standing together, not fighting against each other, but working together to see the mission of Jesus fulfilled. We need each other. We're reaching toward him. We're reaching toward the light. Eyes high, friends, hearing from the spirit of God, living for him and living like him. The days are urgent and the days are exciting. So do you choose to be an oak of righteousness, taking on the mission of Jesus in these days, listening to his spirit, led by his spirit? also been reminded that there's a battle going on. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our battle is not against each other. We are to stand together we are to work together. We are to love well together to see the mission of Jesus fulfilled in these days through us, through his oaks of righteousness. So friends, we live a Jesus culture. We're about spiritual renewal. We're about partnering up. We're about transforming Australia one life at a time with the love of Jesus. So eyes high, Imagine what he can do in us and through us. Bless you.
Father, we thank you because this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we be glad in it, oh God. Father, we pray this morning, oh God, as we are gathered together, that God, you will use us as your hands and your feet, oh God, to the people that we walk with, the people in our community, the people in our church, oh God. Father, we dedicate ourselves, oh God. We offer ourselves as a vessel of honor for you to use us, oh God, so that God, we may go out there and encourage other people and bring them calm to your saving knowledge. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. When light hits a reflective surface, like water, at an angle it bounces off at the same but opposite angle. This is called specular reflection. Any disturbance or blemish on the reflective surface causes the light to bounce off in different directions. This is called diffuse reflection. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of Lord Jesus. We are being transformed into his very image as we move from the brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transformation comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You're looking at a lake it's not raining, but the sky is a deep grey as it's covered by clouds and a mist blankets the water. These things disturb the reflection and prevent us from seeing what's there in all its beauty. We have an idea of what's there, an impression of what's there, but we're missing out on the detail and perfection. When the obstructions of light start to dissipate, we begin to see the whole picture. The more the light comes through, the calmer the water is, the more we see the specular reflection. We have a mist-like veil over our faces. As we grow closer to God, as we get to know Him better, the veil lifts and we are able to see His glory. Then we start to reflect Him more clearly to the people in our world. We should live every day trying to be like Jesus, trying to be His specular reflection. Hello, greetings to Australian Salvos. Thank you for your faithfulness to Jesus and for your kindness to me during the time I lived in Australia, as well as during several other visits to Australia over the years. I hold you with deep love and affection in my heart always. Eyes high, living like him, living for him. A young man I know learned to play a brass instrument in the Salvation Army and as a teenager, spent hours practicing his trumpet. He was an intensely focused person, even as an adolescent. But the hard drive of the human brain only has so much capacity. And so this young man ignored many other things as he focused with great singularity on his musicianship. He ignored things like his home address, where his house was located and how to get there. But through his focus on his trumpet playing, he gained a full scholarship to an elite music school. He ignored things like the risks of hanging his band uniform against the bare light bulbs present in theater dressing rooms, thereby catching his uniform on fire as he hung it there. But he nailed his flugelhorn solo, note perfect, from memory, at that concert and every concert. Focused. Following graduation, he won first chair trumpet in the top military band, which he still holds today. His eyes were fixed on developing himself as a trumpet player to the full of his capacity. Now stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. That's from the voice. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Fasten our gaze on Jesus. Stay focused on Jesus. Eyes high. Live like him, live for him. So how did Jesus live? Hebrews 12, 2 goes on to say, that Jesus never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God from the message. In the Passion Translation, Hebrews 12, 2, Jesus' example is this, his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his. And from the voice, he focused on the joy that was set before him. Focus on Jesus who was focused on what pleases. Joy together with us, 
forever. Just think about that for a minute. Jesus was focused on union with you and with me, with his bride, with his beloved, with humankind. That kept him focused. So how did he live? Back to Hebrews 12, 2 in the message. Jesus could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. In the Passion Translation, same verse, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation. And then in the voice, he endured the cross and ignored the shame of that death. Endure the pain, ignore the shame. How did Jesus live? Back to Hebrews 12, 2. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. From the message. And from the voice, Hebrews 12, 2. Now Jesus is seated beside God on the throne, a place of honor. Now seated in glory, not the end of the story. There he is. So how do we live like him and for him? Focus on Jesus, who was focused on what pleases. Joy together with us forever. Jesus focus on what pleases, the prize, the future joy of union with us, enabled him, motivated him to ignore and to endure. There's a lot of research indicating the potential harmful effects of extensive screen time and technology use, including things like heightened attention deficit symptoms, impaired emotional and social intelligence, technology addiction, social isolation, impaired brain development, and disrupted sleep. Heightened attention deficit symptoms. In other words, greater difficulty in focusing. God help us. At Jesus' baptism, recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, a voice came from heaven that said of Jesus, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. So here we are with the bombardment of technology, making it more difficult to focus, and here's the voice of God saying, listen to Jesus. So how do we do this? As Jesus did, endure the pain, ignore the shame. Jesus took the long-term view. He had realistic perspective. There will be pain, there will be shame. Stay focused on the end game. What are you focused on? Where are you headed? What's your long-term view? Let's just pause for a moment right now. Pay attention on the inside. What's the focus of your life? Where is your attention? What's your long-term view? What's the end game for you right now? Let's just listen for a moment. Listening to Jesus as a lifestyle to get to the goal, to reach where we're focused on, requires us to do two things, to endure and to ignore, even as Jesus did. So what to endure? Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane enduring the pain. Again, in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Garden of Gethsemane, we read that Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. So overwhelmed, I feel like I could die, he was saying. Then he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, Father, if possible, May this cup be taken from me, but whatever you want, from Matthew 26. Enduring the pain. He endured the pain of the cross, Hebrews 12, 2 tells us. Hebrews 12, 3 tells us Jesus endured the pain of opposition from sinners. Stepping back now to the context of the book of Hebrews, this book was written to Christ followers who were experiencing persecution. And so the author tells about our Savior, our brother, our leader, Jesus, who also suffered greatly, and he endured it. And so to the readers of this letter, the author writes, endure the pain of hardship, Hebrews 12, 7. We take strength from Jesus' own example. What pain are you, am I, experiencing in these days? Everyone on the planet, this global pandemic, is experiencing pain in some way in relation to COVID-19. There are manifold economic implications to the pandemic in these days, although not equally. But many are unemployed or homeless. Domestic violence has increased, as have symptoms of anxiety. 
or depression. The COVID-19 pandemic has disproportionately brought pain to vulnerable people and to women who have lost their employment in a larger, larger numbers, larger percentage than have men. Again, vulnerable to, to domestic violence, compounding uh, the existing obstacles to women and to girls. We've been confronted in recent months with uh, racial injustices, great pain that is being endured by many in these days. Disappointments with leaders. There have been several very publicized moral failures in recent months, relational conflicts, and alienation. Pain that we're enduring. If our hope is in Christ and in Christ's followers focusing on Jesus, eyes high, and living like him and living for him, it must, it will include enduring pain. Later on in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, our text for today, in the contemporary English version we read, to the besieged believers who received this letter and to us, the writer admonishes, stand up straight, stop your knees from shaking. Another translation, Hebrews 12, 12, be made strong even in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship and strengthen your weak knees. That's Hebrews 12, 12. So even now, let's inhale fresh empowerment by the Spirit of Christ, also the breath of God, to impart to you, to me, to us, endurance. In Romans chapter 8, Paul describes all of creation is groaning and travailing to bring forth the life of God, the, the fullness of what God has provided for us. He, he likens the suffering of creation and humanity as childbirth or labor, and breathing is very important in that context. And so even now, breathe in the Spirit's strength to give us endurance in the pain, and breathe out the toxic bitterness and anxieties that would damage us as Christ followers. Eyes high, living like him, living for him. Spirit breathing in, strength to endure the pain. He endured the pain and ignored the shame. So what do we ignore? How about if rather than a to-do list, we develop a not-to-do list? Some things we must choose to ignore. Jesus spoke to his followers and said, if you're not received, shake the dust off your feet. Ignore. Don't let that hang you up, right? Paul wrote later, know your territory, that he would know his own territory, the sphere assigned to him. 2 Corinthians 10, 13 in the message says it this way, we're sticking to the limits of what God has set for us. Some things to ignore, stay within our limits. So a not to do list might look something like this. In order to focus on Jesus, who's focused on what pleases, joy together with us forever, I will not allow myself even a hint of sexual immorality, not to do. God helping me, I will not judge and fret about the actions of others so that my soul corrodes into resentment and bitterness, not to do, I'm not gonna do that. Love ignores a multitude of sins, weaknesses, failures. Ignore, flee from the temptation to lose hope, to despair, not to do. I'm not going to squander my energies on frivolous, meaningless things. Rest and recreation, yes, but to invest my life energies in things that are meaningless, I'm not gonna do that. That's on my not to do list. How about you? What's on your not to do list? Things that you will definitely remember to forget, things to ignore, to stay within the sphere that God has given you. These have been for us as individuals, how about for us as a people, as a community, as a territory, as salvationists perhaps, as Christ followers? What should be on our not-to-do list? Are there things that we need to cross off by way of activities, cross off our to-do list, move them over to the not-to-do so that we can better focus on Jesus? I encourage you, I encourage us all to spend time together thinking about this. What needs to be ignored? Endure the pain, some things we are to endure, as Jesus did. 
ignore the shame. Some things we are to ignore, to choose to forget, not to do. As a people, as a community, what might these things look like for you? Paul in the book of Romans says it this way. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2 from the message. Eyes high. Christ now seated in glory, not the end of the story. Hebrews 12, 2. Christ now seated in glory, not the end of the story. Further in the book of Hebrews, we read, In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Also in Hebrews chapter 2. Christ now seated in glory, not the end of the story. Christ didn't ascend to the right hand of the Father in glory to be alone there, remember? For the joy set before him, union with you, together forever, with you and me, to bring many sons and daughters to glory. This is where we're heading. Can this help us in our own focus to endure the pain, to ignore the shame, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? We are headed for union with him in glory. This is part of the purpose of what he's opened for us, a new and living way to bring many many sons and daughters to glory with him, our brother Christ. Focus on Jesus, who was focused on what pleases. Joy together with us forever. Endure the pain, ignore the shame. Christ now seated in glory, not the end of the story. From Colossians. Since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. God bless you, and happy Easter. Let's pray together. Holy One, it is our delight to focus on the example and person of your Son, Jesus. And yet we ask for your grace to help us do that, to focus on Jesus amid the many, many distractions of our day. We follow Jesus' example as he focused on what was pleasing to him, joy at the prospect of union with us together forever. Capture us with this joy and strengthen our ability to focus on Christ now in our day at this time in history, in our contexts. Jesus, it's you. God, please give us divine power to endure pain and hardship in whatever forms they come. Even as our brother Jesus did, strengthen our trembling hearts and our fragile, sometimes feeble will. Give us discernment on what to ignore in these days in order to help us focus on Christ. Please give to each one of us and to all of us together as a people clarity on what are the limits you've set for us, what is ours to invest in, to work at, and what is not. May our not-to-do lists serve to channel our energies effectively in order to advance your purposes in the world. Spirit, Give us vision to see Jesus, now seated in glory. Open the eyes of our hearts that we would see Christ, high and lifted up in a place of honor now. And to know, help us to know, that is also where we are headed and why you came. Through all this, Lord, bring many, many daughters and sons to glory with Christ as has always been your intention. 
May that joy upon which Jesus focused be his and our eternal reward. In his name, amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Lord.